Alright, so good morning. This is going to kind of be a quickie. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is how to set up and group uh, modules and macros to make life easier in the long run. So you'll notice that in the Active Home software, um, we have these concepts of rooms, and these are just logical groupings of the different components or the different uh, modules and whatnot. We also have a module shopping list here, if you will. This is where we have the ability to assign uh, modules to a particular type of hardware and then we have macros where these are automated steps and then timers below that. For purposes of today uh, we're just going to be talking about uh, the rooms and triggering of modules using macros. We're going to do this fairly quickly today. Uh, first of all the responsiveness of the application is actually better than normal right now. Uh, I'm accessing this through a remote desktop so it takes a bit for the screen to refresh. If you're actually on the machine, it's much quicker. So just to give you an example of how we have things set up here, into the television room, I have two separate components. I have a ceiling fan, which is A2, and I have a wall outlet, which is C3. Now, ceiling fan is uh, just a series of lights in the top of the ceiling, and then uh, the wall out here is where I actually power off my television and DVD player uh, between 10 o'clock at night and 6 o'clock in the morning and that kills parasitic draw uh, for those devices off hours. Now if you want to run something like a remote control with something like uh, this handheld key fob here um, these devices can only send specific on off. These are, are much harder to key in and change. So instead of actually trying to rekey this key fob every single time I want to do something, what I do is I set the key fobs and the remotes up to use macros. So if you look under the macro list here, you'll see that I have RC or remote control TV lights on. And what that does is when it triggers M1, it tells A2 to turn on. Same thing if you go to lights off, you trigger M1 off, it tells A2 to turn off. Now that may seem like a little overkill, but here's the reason why. It is much easier for me to change the macro to say push this button and then do something. If I were to rekey this to say I wanted to change it from the TV lights to the living room lights, I would have to rechange the hardware address inside of the key fob as opposed to just changing it in the simple macro right here. So this is obviously a very oversimplified example. Let me show you a little bit more complicated example of why this works well. In the main floor uh, macro, M3, if you push the M, anytime it sees the M3 on signal, it will trigger the ceiling fan and the overhead lights in the living room. So a single action can trigger multiple events. We have this similarly for both the main floor on and main floor off. And as the additional rooms get added, we're going to have, you know, the additional ones for the kitchen over the sink, the kitchen dining room table, all those different things. We'll be have a Honey, I'm Home button, push the button, everything turns on. Now, these triggers are kind of a soft trigger. Things happen, the controller sees the M2, but you have no real way of testing this. So what I've done is I've taken and created macro triggers. These are, for all intents and purposes, fake switches. It's, I've taken a switch module out of the shopping list here from X10 and basically given it the M1 command. So when I'm in the system here I can trigger the M1 macro just by flipping the switch on and off. There's another benefit to this and this gives me state. So when I push the M1 button on the key fob it will change the state of this switch from on to off. So when I'm troubleshooting I can see when things are working or not or if I'm sitting at the console I can just simply trigger this and all those lights will turn themselves on. So we have the key fob, I just showed you that. And we also have the driveway monitor. This is a motion sensor, which we'll talk about uh, in another session.